Okay, Bismillah. Uh, I just want to continue with, with the discussion of the results. Yeah. Uh, for example, one, we started with the rotating axis, which coincide with the origin of the global axis O, and the color is moving. And then uh, we do another example using the same problem, but this time the axis is now located way out from O which is A and A is coincident with C but not on C A is on the bar and C is sliding out okay so we want to compare what are the differences and you can see the differences was that only thing was that VA was calculated in a different manner in the first example and you can see uh, that the answers obtained the rate and uh, the rate yeah where the origin of A coincide, coincide with O, we've got the same answer with the green one when uh, the origin is no longer coincident with A but they are in the same direction. So I and J I give you the same meaning that I is along OC or OA and Y X is along that yeah, and unit vector J is perpendicular to OA. So we've got the similar answer but the way we approach the problem is a bit different. Um, so, in this kind of exercise, there's a lot of um, check and balance that you need to do. And this is, a, uh, to me, it's a good exercise for the student to uh, make sure that they understand how we use the rotating axis, regardless of where the position of the uh, rotating axis is, whether it is at the origin or it could be at uh, away from the origin uh, and of course um, uh, I used to do this I used to ask the student to solve what happened if I put the uh, axis on C yeah in this case the axis is on the bar but it's not on the collar what happened if I put the axis on the collar uh, again it shows uh, uh, how you True, uh, truly understand the, the concept of rotating axis and also the relative motion. Everything started with the ability to understand the relative motion. Yeah, because that, that, that's why our understanding from the four bar linkages and the crank slider mechanism allows us to form uh, the direct understanding. And this this ability to also to understand the rotational motion that allows you to calculate the components in the normal and tangential. So there are three... three um, to me, there are two key points here. Two key points. First is that um, you must be able to uh, uh, to identify uh, if to identify the uh, identify the meaning of the approach uh, uh, it would be uh, pointless for you if you just memorize the equations and then and then try to do the substitution because it doesn't really work sometimes a becomes b b becomes c c becomes a and all those things start to uh, to jumble up and secondly you must uh, know the components yeah, in the equation. Sure. So, for example, I, I will go back to the um, acceleration. Let, let's look at the equation of uh, for the caller. Yeah, acceleration of call. This is just a discussion for what we have done before. So, I think it's good for us to review what we have done. So, we know that the equation of C has got the it must have a and it must have the relative acceleration uh, if we're aware there's always like three or uh, five terms in that and then we have this uh Coriolis components two omega two omega two omega cross v relative and we always have the tangential component which is omega dot cross R that is position 
and then we have got the fifth term which is the uh, which is the uh, uh, normal component which is omega cos omega cos r okay so again we need to understand to which the term belongs to right so we know that v relative belongs to for example i'm going to do the mapping here yeah so let's do the mapping here so v relative is here if we want to do that we must understand that v relative belongs to here and we know that a relative also yeah it belongs to this component yeah and then we have uh, the omega omega what is omega omega dot omega dot belongs to this component so it's gonna be quite a distance to it so this is your omega dot and finally your omega is is the angular speed that is stated here yeah so this r is the position vector so in this case where is r if you know r so let's use another color let's use blue for example so that r r is your position vector of c relative to a here and in this case uh, the position vector here is almost zero yeah so that's why uh, in the case where they are coincident or collocation r is zero and then you then your task is only left to find a but when you look at a you will look at because a has got a is moving a is moving on the bar and a has got two components the normal and the tangential component this is we know that from before and the normal component has got uh, their omega cross omega cross r this is equal so normal component is omega cross omega cross r yeah and then we've got the tangential component is omega dot cross r or alpha cross r see i've got two these omegas yeah so omega cross omega cross r and we can see that even though initially we cancel that because of r is equals to zero yeah but it come back to us in this form so we still have to recalculate this omega cross r because now this is for and you can see that this thing this term starts coming back to replace one what was before a zero so i hope students can uh, follow the argument i hope this does not increase your confusion but to be aware of where sometimes even when we did it r equals to zero but we have alpha cross alpha cross r so thank you